We're trying to change that. How many of you know that if you if revival is going to come in your life and in my life, in this church and in that church, we're going to have to be sitting at the feet of God in prayer. Revival cannot come when you go to church one hour on a Sunday. Then ain't nothing going to happen. But when you sit at the feet of God and you begin to pray and you begin to intercede for your brothers and sisters and you begin to talk about uh, talk to the Lord about your situation and what's going on, amen, the Lord will bring the power of His glory upon you. Let the church say amen to that. Hallelujah. Watch this. Luke chapter 7, starting in verse number 11. And when you're there, say amen. 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 Now, Jesus is going around and he's doing miracles and all this stuff is happening. And he's going into a town called Nain. Nain is about 25 miles south of Capernaum. And as he's going, getting ready to go into town, he's all excited, man. He's all upbeat. He's walking with his disciples. Amen. They're walking down the road. Hallelujah. They're having a good old time. They're praising the Lord. And as they get to the city called Nain, just as they're about to get ready to go into the city gate, a funeral procession is coming out the city gate. This is powerful. Watch this. Because the word Nain means lovely and pleasant. They're excited to go into a town called lovely and pleasant. Amen. They're ready to go do some miracles in that town. Jesus is getting ready to preach. Amen. But as they're getting ready to walk in, a funeral procession is coming out. Oh, my God. All of a sudden, things aren't so lovely and things aren't so pleasant. Come on, somebody. How many of you have ever thought that uh, something good was going to happen? Amen. Let me just tell you what happened to me today. I was on my way to church. A funny thing happened to me on the way to church. <laughs> I thought I was coming to church to have a lovely and a pleasant time. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and as I was leave turning out of my street to get on La Sierra, a car runs the red light and hits me today. Oh. At 40 miles an hour, yeah. yeah. He runs the red light and hits me. I'm thinking I'm turning, coming to lovely and pleasant La Sierra Park, and all of a sudden I'm in a high-speed chase trying to catch this fool. Come on, somebody. I, I said, oh, Lord, oh, I said, oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, help that man. Oh, Jesus, help that man. I hope he got real good insurance once I catch him. Come on, somebody. Yeah. And I wasn't talking auto insurance. I was talking medical insurance. So here I am coming. I thought it was going to be pleasant and lovely coming here to preach. And man, the devil tries to mess everything up. The devil tries to mess everything up, man. He's good at putting a fly in the ointment. He's good at throwing a monkey wrench in your situation. Come on, somebody. He's good at, 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 at closing one door and opening another door to try to get you to detour a different way. Come on, somebody say amen to that. Amen. That's what he does. That's his job. And this is what's happening with Jesus. Jesus is getting ready to go into the town. Amen. The town called Lovely and Pleasant, and a funeral procession is coming out. Oh, my God. Let's read uh, verse number 11. Let's read it together. Here we go. Soon afterward, Jesus went to a town called Nain. Lovely and pleasant. That's what it means. And his disciples were with him, and so was a large crowd. As he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out. This dead person was the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. Let the church say amen. 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 All right, so watch what's happening here. The mother is a widow, which means her husband has already died. And now, the only son that she had is also passed away. Now, here's what happened in the Jewish community in those days. In those days, uh, your husband, ladies, was your sole provider. Most of the women stayed at home. The husband worked and provided for the home. That was his job. That was his responsibility. Amen. In the event that the husband was gone or that the husband could not provide, then the sons were the one who were, ones who were responsible of taking care of the family. The story clearly says that the husband has passed and now the son has passed. In that time and in that culture, let me just tell you, tell you like this. I'm going to be honest with you, ladies. If you didn't have any extra family around, any cousins, any family, amen, then you would sometimes have to resort to doing things you didn't want to do to help pay the bills. Right, right. 
I don't know about you ladies, but have you ever had to resort to something you never wanted to do to help pay the bills? In this time and in this culture that we live in, there's a lot of people who are out of work. There's a lot of people because of the COVID and all this stuff that's happening that are out of work. So people are having to scramble to figure out ways to make money. There's a lot of websites that are getting innocent people involved in doing things they shouldn't be doing. Come on, somebody. Am I preaching to anybody tonight? Listen, listen. There's a lot of websites that are collecting money for people. People that are selling stuff they shouldn't be selling. Selling their body. Selling their, come on, selling their all kinds of stuff online. You should have seen the people in Lake Tahoe when I started talking about prostitution. Their eyes got this big. They're like, we don't, we don't talk about that kind of stuff around here. And I, said, I said, yeah, I know. I said, that's the problem. It's happening in the houses all around you. It's happening in neighborhoods all around you. It's happening from the East Coast to the West Coast. It's happening. Come on, somebody. And we all know this. Listen, uh, uh, before, uh, somebody who wanted to go see a woman of the night would go to downtown and go to a dark street corner and find a girl. Now you can pick up your phone or go online or pick up your phone and go on TikTok and you can go on uh, tic, uh, Nick Nat Paddywhack. You can go on all kinds of stuff. Right? And you don't have to go find it. Now it comes right to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marijuana is legal. You don't have to go find it. It comes right to, yeah, yeah, deliver free cannabis right to your door. Come on, somebody. Speed is, uh, speed, they're delivering speed right to you now. The dope dealer makes house calls, and he, that's never changed. Come on, somebody. Say amen to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, watch what, ha what happens. Jesus sees the mother walking at the front of the casket. He perceives because he's God. Wait a minute. Something's going on here. This isn't so lovely and this isn't so pleasant. I see the mother crying and I perceive she's a widow and her only son is dead. Let's read. Watch this. As he approached the town gate, verse 12, a dead person was being carried out. The only son of his mother and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the town was with her. And when the Lord saw her, verse 13, his heart went out to her and he said to her, baby girl, don't you cry. <laughs> oh, watch this, watch this, watch this. He sees that the son is the one who's dead in the casket, but his compassion is for the mother. Oh, come on, somebody, watch this. He sees what's going on, amen. He knows what's coming her way, but his compassion is for the mother. Watch what happens here. He says to her, he says, don't you cry, don't you cry. Then he went up to the coffin he touched the coffin, and those carrying it stood still. And watch what he says. He says, young man, I say to you, get up. Woo! The dead man sat up and began to talk. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. Let the church say amen. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Watch this. Watch this. I, I want to just share something with you. Because Jesus sees what's happening not to the son, what's happening to the mother. Yes. He perceives what's about to happen and what's going down right here and what's shaking. So, so he goes up to the coffin. He says, don't cry. I'm going to do something for you. Amen. How many of you know that God can always get something good out of something bad? Yeah, that's right. Come on, somebody say amen to that. Amen. God is a master at turning things around late in the midnight hour. God is a good God, a powerful God, and God is always working out things for your good and for his glory. Let the church say amen. amen. And when God begins to, uh, uh, when he sees what's happening with the mom, remember, he goes up and he touches the coffin. Oh, I don't know about you, but when God touches your situation, woo, when God puts his hands on your situation, and then God is going to work things out for you late in the midnight hour, let the church say amen to that. Amen. When God puts his hands all over your situation, God is going to do miracles in your life. Let the church say amen. amen. Oh, man, this is what God did with us when God was all over our car accident. When God was all over our Lake Tahoe, when God was all over our lives, when God was touching the things that were taking us down, when God was touching the situations that were holding us back, amen. God was already working miracles. Let the church say amen. amen. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, 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 oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. when God puts his hands on you, God puts his hands on you. miracles are going to happen. Miracles. Now look at the neighbor on the other side, the one you don't like, and say, neighbor, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. When God gets his hands on you, he is going to work miracles in your life. 
Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Hallelujah. Oh, man. I don't know about you, but I want God to have his hand all over my situation. I don't know about you. I want his hand all over my marriage. I don't know about you. I want his hands all over my house. Come on. I don't know about you. I want his hands all over my children. I don't know about you. I want his hands all over my church. Come on, somebody. I don't know about you, but I want his hands all over my church. Watch this, watch this. As I study this out, Jesus says that he goes up and touches the coffin. And the people who were carrying the body stood still. He said to the man laying in the coffin, he says, young man, I'm say, I say to you, get up. The dead man, verse 15, sat up and began to talk. Now watch this. As I studied this out, I said, Lord, what does it mean that he sat up? Because in the New uh, new, uh, new American Standard, it's, uh, Jesus said, Arise, and the boy stood up. That's right. uh -huh. Amen. I read it in the New King James, amen? And the Bible says that he shot up. Woo. The King James Version said that he sprang up. Come on, somebody. And as I read this, I said, Lord, what does this mean? The word for he sat up was the word anakathizo. Anakathizo. It's a Greek word. It means to sit up or to set up. Oh, watch this, watch this. To sit up or to set up. I'm telling you right now that your bad situation is a setup for God to move in your life. God can move in a powerful way. You think that something is happening for bad, God is setting it up for good. Come on, somebody. You think that everything goes down, but God is setting you up for a promotion. Amen. It's not a setback, it's a setup. Let the truth say amen. amen. Young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and a cathiso and began to talk. And Jesus presented him back to his mother. Oh, he didn't raise him. Listen to this. He didn't raise him for the boy. He raised him for his mama. Oh, listen to this. How many of you know that a praying mama is a powerful mama? That's a praying mama right here. Watch this. David said this in Psalm number 51. He said, create in me a clean heart, Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Ah, oh, come on, somebody, listen to this. Look how powerful this is. Because this praying mama was praying over her son. She had already lost her husband and now her baby boy. Amen. And when she begins to pray, I can just imagine what she's thinking to herself. Lord, how could you let this happen to me? Lord, I love you and I serve you. How could you let me go through this? How many of you know it's easy to praise God on the mountaintop, hey, but you learn to trust God down in the valley of the shadow of death? Come on, somebody say amen. And sometimes you've got to go through some things so that God can draw you close to him. Sometimes God allows you to step into some dark stuff, amen, so that he can bring light to a dark situation. Come on, somebody. Sometimes God allows you to go into some bad situations so he can show that your faith is genuine and proven as better than gold. Preach it, Pastor. Preach it, Pastor. Now, I want you to see something. This is important, and we're going to finish with this. This is a picture of salvation. Can the dead man do anything for himself? No. He's dead. Can he do any good works to achieve his salvation? No. no, he's dead. Is he able to do anything in the state that he's in? No. Turn with me in your Bibles real quick. We'll close with this. Ephesians chapter 2. Look at the picture of salvation that God gives us here. This is amazing. Ephesians 2. When you're there, say amen. Ephesians chapter 2. Watch this. You and I were the same as that dead boy. We were dead in our trespasses and sins. There was nothing we could do for ourselves, but watch what God says. As for you, Ephesians chapter 2, you were dead in your transgressions and your sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world, when you followed the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now energizing those who are disobedient, all of us also lived among them at one time, uh, having a good time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature, following its desires and thoughts. And just like that dead boy in the coffin, we were by nature objects of wrath. All verse number four, but because of his great love for us, 
God who is rich in mercy. Look at your neighbor and say, he's rich in mercy, neighbor. Rich in mercy. Made us alive with him even while we were dead and our trespasses and sins. How many of you know, amen, that the Lord sent somebody to you to preach the gospel to you? They put their hands on your coffin. They put their hands on your dead situation. And somebody preached the word of faith to you and you believed. And God did a miracle in your life. Let the church say amen to that. Wow, 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 watch this. But because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy, God who is rich in power, God who is rich in goodness, God who is rich in salvation, God who is rich in holiness, God who is rich in his goodness, come on, made us alive with Christ. Even while we were dead in our transgressions, for it is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace. Watch this. Jesus comes. He sees the mom crying. He tells her, don't cry, baby girl. Watch this. I'm going to go up, and though you don't deserve it, I'm going to touch the coffin. I'm going to go up, and though you didn't do anything to earn it, I'm going to tell the boy on the inside to sit up. I'm going to go, and I know you're crying, but it's going to be because of my grace and mercy. I'm going to raise him up and give him right back to you. Oh, my God. Nothing that you and I could have done, nothing that you and I could have earned, nothing that you and I could have paid for. Come on, somebody. Nothing that you and I could have ever done. But it was only by the grace of God. Look at your neighbor and say, it's the grace of God, neighbor, the grace of God. Oh, watch this, watch this. Watch this. For it is by grace that he touched your situation. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourselves. But it is the free gift of God. Yes. Not by any works that you have done, so that you can brag about it or boast about it. For we are God's workmanship, Amen. created in Christ Jesus to do the good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. Let the church say amen. 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 Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm alive, neighbor, I'm alive. Yeah. 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 Watch this. Flo, I want you to hear me. Watch this in this. The Bible says, weeping may endure for a night. But joy, come on. Come on. Come on. I want to ask you one thing. Has God been gracious to you? Yeah. Let's all stand together. Come on, everybody. Stand. 